Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm the original creator of the Folk Art One Stroke Painting Technique. Today I'm here with another fun lesson from Let's Paint Folk Art One Stroke Birds and Blossoms. There are six different birds that we're painting during the year and I'm thrilled to be teaching you this fun owl today you're gonna have a great time with us. So let me tell you about the kits that we have. First of all, if you haven't seen these kits yet, I want you to go to plaidonline.com forward slash Let's Paint. And right there, you'll see all the kits that we have and everything that's available to make painting one stroke easy for you. Now, what we have in this new kit that Plaid's done again this year, they just hit the mark and I'm so thrilled. We have a folder that I hand painted for you. And inside the folder, we have a place for you to store all the teaching guides that we're using during this year. They have a coat on them so you can practice on top of my actual size strokes. We also have patterns that are brand new this year and those patterns are gonna help you keep the size and um, whether it's smaller or larger. And sometimes you don't know that unless you have that actual pattern there in front of you. And it's gonna make it easier for you to paint. You get to practice on the teaching guides and then you have a pattern that you're gonna be able to paint right inside of that size. So it makes it wonderful. And also what makes it beautiful are two other things that I love very much. And that's the Folk Art One Stroke brushes. These one stroke brushes are the value pack. There's 10 of my most used brushes inside this kit so that you have every brush you need for all the paintings this year. You also have my very favorite Folk Art multi-surface paint. And multi-surface Folk Art paint has luscious creamy paint, vivid colors. It's got a sealer inside the paint so you can paint indoors, outdoors, and it's called multi-surface for a reason. You can paint on all kinds of wonderful surfaces around your home. So besides that, we also have another kit. So you gotta go check out the kit, it's a surface kit. It has every piece of wood that we've used during the year for the birds and blossoms. Now this surface I'm using here is a beautiful plank with natural wood, as beautiful grains in that wood, and a bark edge on both sides. So I loved it, I left it natural. I think you're gonna have a great time with it. And I can't wait for you to come join me in the studio and let's start painting. Okay, thanks for coming to our studio and let's get started. I'm going to take our kit and pull out some of the pieces I wanted you to use. And I, if you don't have your kit, please go to plaidonline.com forward slash less paint and check out the Birds and Blossom kit that we're using. Because everything you need in it from our patterns to our reusable teaching guides for each project that we've, we're going to learn this year and all your paints and brushes and supplies are in there. So I have the pattern all pulled out the teaching guide, and on the teaching guide, it's gonna list the colors that we're gonna use. And I love multi-surface paint, and multi-surface paint is um, absolutely brilliant. It's got vivid colors. It's creamy and luscious, perfect for one stroke painting. So some of the colors that we're gonna be using here, it, we've got pure orange, we've got um, pure black, we have bumblebee, and burnt umber, apple red for all those pretty fall leaves, pueblo, titanium white, classic green, and the final non-color I want you to use is folk art floating medium. We use this with one stroke painting instead of water. All right, so that's going to be that clear um, liquid that you see in our palette. So now, next thing I want to share with you is that we also have my value pack of brushes. Now, if you look at this, this is also what's in the kit. 
So you get all the brushes I'm, you're going to use for all my projects. You're going to have two scruffies, two different size liners and scruffies, and all these flat brushes that will help you do all the fine detail that we will be doing. There's 10 of them, 10 brushes. So then um, some of the other things that are really important for learning one stroke is we have a double loader. So most, um, most tricks or most hints to make painting one stroke good or how we double load our brush. So then we have a palette for you to put the double loader inside. We have a brush basin that's going to help you clean and keep your brushes nice. Um, a couple of other little supplies that I want you to have is some type of sandpaper or sanding block. We're going to have a stylus. You, I use chalk or pencil or both and then um, some tracing paper because I've traced out the pattern and I like to have that tracing paper so we have a very good copy of our pattern at all times and some graphite paper and paper towel. What I want to go to now that's also on your supply list here is our large wood plank with bark. Now look at this bark. See how nice? It gives it a real natural look. And I thought if you had all these beautiful leaves and an owl sitting in there, this bark would be really wonderful. I like this plaque a lot. I think you will too. Using it's fun because we have natural wood grain in here. And one of the things I thought would be fun with the owl and the leaves is to leave it on the natural wood. So that's up to you. You can put a wash on the back or some kind of color and then paint, but I'm choosing to use the raw wood on this one. So the first thing that I want you to see is if you haven't done this before, you take a marker and you go mostly, if you look at this pattern, you're gonna go mostly on the outside edges so you know the different segments of the owl and his different feathers so that you can also put in the eye and know where those are going to go. But if you notice, there's not as much detail, but that detail is going to be there so you can lay that by you as you're practicing or, or building your design. Also, there's a couple different words in the package with, that you can trace on, like fall, if you want to um, transfer that. And then we did two leaves. Now, you can see I did multiple leaves, but these two shapes of leaves from the maple, um, different maple leaves, different fall leaves, and then you can move it around different ways to lay it on your wood. Now, as you might see, I have uh, chosen to put him part way off, all right? So the thing that's nice about this is you can line it up because you can see through it well, and you can decide where to put it, this on your piece. All right, so I want to show you here that I have a couple of fingers from the bottom, so I can move it down to there. Leaves me a little bit of room for the wood, I mean for the leaves to go up at the top. I'm also going to just tape this down with painter's tape. And then I can flip it to see if I'm getting my tracing on here, okay? And check and see if that's, um, if it's dark enough or if it's where I want it to be. All right, so then it's easy to lay the graphite. The graphite's going to be shiny side down. And we're going to slide it in there. And I um, want you to see as we put this in here, we're going to pull, pull the stylus over. And we're going to, I'm going to use the larger tip of the stylus. And I'm just going to start right here tracing this on. And making sure, I'm going to go check it really quick. We're coming down here and it makes it a little interesting to have some of it off of the canvas, off of the wood. See, so this isn't showing up well, so this is what I want you to do. We're going to scrub it a little bit, all right? See if this works out better, because this is what I wanted you to see before we keep going here, is what's going to work for you, all right? Now look, see, now you can see it. 
All right. Now I'm going to come here. I might not do all of these segments, but like I, I want this right here. That's the V on the owl. I want the beak. And we really want the center right here because that's going to be how big his eye, his eyeball is going to be. <laughs> okay. So then this is the whole shape of how you're going to fluff out the, uh, the owl's feathers around the eye. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and get your owl traced on. We're not going to do the leaves right now. We're going to come back and do the leaves later. But I'm going to continue tracing this and loading my palette with, with um, the Pueblo and some burnt umber. Okay, and we'll be right back. Okay, I also added pure black, guys. So I have burnt umber, Pueblo, and pure black with floating medium in the middle. So what we're going to do first is if you look really close on here, um, you can see the different segments. And I'm trying to keep it that way, but also I want to base coat an underneath coat. And so I'm going to take this dampened brush, lay it on the paper towel, pick up floating medium, work it in and grab my Pueblo. And so I'm going to come right in here and I think I can still see my pattern underneath. So if I do a light coat, I can still see it. Okay. There we go. All right. So I keep picking up floating medium, working that in. And this is your base coat of color. And then we add all kinds of fun colors in here. And there's not a ton of colors with owls. I've used burnt umber, uh, the pure blacks, the yellow ochres before, um, some whites. There's all kinds of pretty colors that you can use and make him really interesting looking. So if it's getting dark again, I'm going to take and I picked up more floating medium and just move the color down. I got a, a lot of Pueblo thinking, think, just remembering that I was going to base coat all this and look, I used floating medium so it made it really thin. I hardly used any. Okay, go to that raw edge and kind of work that in there, okay? And then we want to put some on the tail. So where you will look for this on this side, you'll see the tail over here, and it'll show that to you. Now you go right here and it tells you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put a three-quarter inch stroke of Pueblo. Then we're going to pick up <clears throat> with that brush, let me put this down here first. A little bit of burnt umber. All right. So then when we stroke, we should have both colors here and give you a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Now I made you a little paper towel eraser. We're going to wet this because when you're on these teaching guides they're coated and they're reusable and they and so what you want to do is our paints made to stick <laughs> so on glass metal ceramic whatever and all kinds of surfaces so it's got a seether in it so if you don't wipe it off it might dry and be very hard to get off okay so what's going to happen here is see i've got all of this in here base coated already same thing about in here where the eyes are. And so as I'm doing that, I'm then going to come back and it'll show you on here that if I have these colors in my three quarter brush and I pick up some of the burnt umber, then I can come right on the outside edges of the shading and just come see how I just come in here. So it's good for you to practice that and see if you can get comfortable with that movement around because that's going to get this final picture for you. 
All right, so we just want to take it off. And the beauty of the worksheet is it's like I'm at home with you because you might be watching me take this lesson with me, but what you don't know is actual size and you don't see up close and personal each of the shading sections that we're using here. Now, as it's dry, you can see that it's starting to shade through there. And I'm going to, first of all, start on this body. And when you're looking here, the body's going to say that you base coat it all with Pueblo. Then you're going to shade your burnt, um, burnt umber areas. And then you're going to deepen with uh, the pure black, which I've pulled out already. And then start doing feathers. All right. And the feathers are on the chisel or they're flat. And so I'm going to, when we get to that point, I'm going to share that with you. All right. So... Let's, oops, let's take the three quarter inch flat again, all right, and we're going to come, let's pull this down just a little bit so you can, you've got your picture and all. Before we go any further, remember, this is going to raise the green. So when it raises the green, I'm going to have to blow dry it for just a second, and you, and you do also, so that we can get the fuzziness off of this and we can get smoother strokes, okay? So, Cause it raises the green on natural wood. Okay, so let's get our sanding block and we're gonna do a light coat of, a light uh, pressure of sanding on here and knock off those fuzzies, okay? It's just going to make the strokes just be nice and smooth. There we go. Now, also, I've got some in this area, and when we start doing our leaves, we need to have it really super smooth because we're going to be shading as we stroke and adding multiple colors. Okay. Okay. That'll help us. All right. All right, so I've got lots of little shavings over there. All right, so let's look at the next things that we're adding on here, the next strokes. We're going to take the floating medium, and there's a little bit of Pueblo and burnt umber in here. So some areas I did it kind of light, and that would be right under the, the head up here. So we're gonna come right under here. Now remember, it's kind of off the edge here, so everything's not centered right there. We're gonna come up a little bit here. Okay, a little bit more medium. Now down into here is another segment. See that? I'm just floating it with floating medium. We didn't need a lot of the shades of brown there. So here's the, up here is the head. See that? And right there. Just so that you can visually see what I'm sharing with you. All right, and then the next step here is we're going to come down here and we're going to do this little V here into the tail. And so it's not centered this, it's over here just slightly. And then over. Does that help you? Okay. And that gives us some pretty color. All right, so then this was really dark in here. So I'm going to stroke, I mean, dip a little bit of floating medium onto the three quarter, just so it moves easier on this raw wood. Okay, so these are just like the base coating of underneath everything, underneath all the feathers and all. And see, you start getting some depth even though we haven't done all of our detail yet. And then we can come here a little bit. 
Okay. Now, let me check really quick, make sure. We'll see we don't have a lot of shading on the towel with uh, burn umber. And, but then we want to go up to the eye area. Now, the V first that we have right here at the top of the head, where are we at? There we are. Right here's the beak. It's easy from the beak, right? Okay. That me that floating medium is going to help you move this. There we go. All right. I'm going to put my beak in there, and then the other color that goes in there <clears throat> is right on this edge. So this one's lighter. You see that? This one's heavy up there or solid. This one's more lighter. Okay, so let's see. Now I want to go here and see where the eye and the beak is. And so this is eyes and beak. Now it's a 12 flat, so let's go get our 12. And then we're going to base coat in the eye and the beak. And then add burnt umber shading to Pueblo area. Okay. Well, we just did that right there. I already, I jumped. I jumped. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pick up on both sides of the 12 the pure black. And then I'm, if you look really careful, I can see where that eye is. And I love looking at owl eyes. Sometimes I just do the face when I do a painting, just this little segment, <laughs> because the eyes are making them so interesting. Oops, I made that a little bit big. Okay, so I have two options at this point. I can have my paper towel there and I can try wiping that off with a wet brush. And it worked. Does anybody know what the second option is? It is to make the eye bigger and bigger. So that's better. So now it shows you right here that we can do a glare. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with going straight to your piece like I did, just practice going right here. One, to until you get that where it's comfortable for you to do that. All right, but now I want to show you, let's put out some of the titanium white because I want to show you the little bit of a glare on the eye. And, oh, I didn't do the beak, excuse me. Let's put the beak on first and then we will do the glares. Okay, so right in here, it strokes down on one side. Practice it right here. You can just push and stand up if you want. Or I'm doing one side and then the other side to get to the point. So, especially on the raw wood, even after I sanded it, it uh, feels a little bit better when I stroke it both ways. Now, it has a glare on it and so do the eyes. So, I've got the uh, pure black on both sides of the brush. I like to tap this so it spreads it. Okay, and then I'm going to come right here to this edge. And now I'm going to go back and forth a little bit because I want a glare, not a ton of white on here. All right, now this absorbs in the wood pretty fast. So what you're going to see is we're going to come right here and it's going to be dry enough for me to come right there and touch it. Okay, see this glare? Now you saw me work this in, but it's gonna help you to come over here and work right on the guide to see, the reusable teaching guide to see if you're getting that shading. See that? And then that, that makes you feel comfortable that you can go right here and get that same glare that we got right there. All right, so let's look. Let's wipe this off and see 
what was it to do next? It was to put a glare, a little accent in there with, um, you can use a two flat or a one script liner. Um, we've got the glare there, we practice it here. So let's come right here and put the glare on the beak. I'd like to come across here a little bit and have that glaze on there. Now I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna use a two flat. And then, so if I pick up a teeny bit of white, then I can just put a little highlight there and you can also use a two script liner is actually what I say you use. And then lay it down and then do a little line on the side, a little comma, okay? So this is more of a square, so let's try that. A little bit of, all right, I need to get more paint. A little bit of this, do the same thing on both eyes. All right, and then a little bit of a glare. And you might want to put little nostrils if they really show, but we put a lot of feathers coming down, so you might not see much of that. Okay, I want you to see really close how those eye highlights are. See, I do a bigger highlight, kind of at the highlight at the top, and then a little one at the bottom along with the glare, okay? Okay, so let's go back to our guide and let's um, finish the bottom because I want that to dry so when we get ready to boo the feathers around the eyes and the shading that it will be all dry, okay? So let's look down here. Some of the steps you will see that I've taken um, different size brushes, a six and a two, as we've come along here, and here is your six. And we these, I've you see the arrows, I'm touching and pulling. And then over here, I'm just doing little strokes. So what I'm gonna do is I dampen this brush, lay it on the paper towel. Then I'm gonna come here and pick up the burnt umber. I kinda do both sides, all right? And up in this area where I have it pretty dark, I'm going to show you that there's some pure black mixed in with some of the burnt umber. So you're gonna rotate. Some will have pure black in it and some will just have burnt umber. And some will have burnt umber with black, uh, the pure black added on top. So let's just go like this and we're just going back and forth up here. You get both colors. And we're gonna be a little bit bigger here. And then go up to the chisel of the brush as we come higher. Because this wood is absorbing really good. So just, you see how often I'm going up to get the color. I can usually do all the way here and all the way here and then go up and get more, all right? All right, I will shade, lay, shade later underneath to see how that makes it look like it's um, behind. All right, now let's look at these. See these? Those uh, feathers are just burnt umber with the same six. Now what I did first along here is I did bring some of these down here. All right, and just keep picking up your burnt umber on the six. Okay, and then, cause in this area, I did come back with some titanium white, but I needed this base first. So let's pick up some more burn umber. Now this is what happens in here. I am going to touch, pull, touch, pull. I wanna drag it a little bit more. Okay, so there's space between it. There we go. So that means I barely touch it and then it, then it drags up for me. Can you see that? When I was pushing harder and that, that's like I painted it. And I want it to be a stroke instead of just uh, painting. Touch, lift. But it's a light touch. 
and it'll give you the feel of some feathers. Okay, I'm just going to keep going along here and we're alternating so we're going to go in between and not just one above another one, okay? Okay, and I went all the way up because then we're going to come back and put some white in these different segments. Just like I showed you right here, the white. All right, and everything shows you which way to do it, which way to hold the brush when you're doing it. Okay, so in this area, you can tell right here that we need a little bit more burn umber in here. So floating medium, a little bit of burn umber. And I'm just going to come right through here, shade it a little bit more with the brown, burnt umber color. Now I'm going to come in here and pick up pure black. All right, so now look what happens here. You can see right here, it shows you that I'm going to do these strokes like this on the chisel, right on the chisel, not the flat of the brush. So right along here, you can see he's really fun. There's not really hard strokes, it's just layering. Okay. And there's some wonderful little um, owls that are black. I mean, white with black specks. And so that's how I would do some of those specks with a flat stroke because it's inside the feathers. Okay, see how fun that is? The white's gonna make everything pop. All right, then we're gonna come right here with a 12 and we're gonna add right down in this area here some little bit more of the pure black and here before we go to the white. Okay, and then I want you to switch it because we're gonna see right here. So this here on the tail is saying um, that we used the 12, which is what I picked up here. And if I picked up the licorice, now what I want you to see is we're gonna come right here with short strokes. And this makes it look more like feathers than if you just put a a band of color here is why we're doing it choppy. Okay. And he already starting to look like something. Okay, so I'm going to go along here because I do put a little bit of white at the bottom of the tail. All right. Now, before we go any further on adding white, I'm going to go right around his eye here now. And what we want to do is pick up burn umber on this 12 flat. And I'm going to go right inside this area and touch and pull burn umber all around the circle where the eye is. And see those little ragged edges from pulling it? Okay, all around there. Let's do it over here too. Okay, we have a little bit down here. Okay, now up in this area, we're gonna take the same 12 even with the burn umber on it and we're gonna pick up pure black. I like to have a couple of these up here um, so he looks like he's a little fuzzy at the top. Okay, so just fill those in a little bit more down in here. 
because we are going to put a few white feathers over that too. Okay, so see we've got that contrast which makes it really nice. These also have a little bit of this feathering from here. And you don't see it on that side. All right. Now, a lot of this other detail, we're going to use script liners. And but right here for these white feathers, the um, two is what we used on here. Two and the six will help you a lot when we're doing this. So let's try this. We're going to pick up some titanium white. And here we're doing little teeny strokes pulled up. All right, here we're going to do more like these, where we push and pull a little bit bigger. All right, and then here's on the chisel. And the arrows show you exactly which way to go. All right, so be sure that you're looking at that really good as you're practicing it, which way I have the arrows going because this showed the licorice coming down, I mean the uh, pure black coming down. All right, and, uh, and then we're gonna add some whites in there, okay? So if we have titanium white, and we're gonna take and pull some of this feathering up here. See, it's nice even on the damp and, you know, the paint that's still wet underneath, the pure black, because it just gives you another shading. And then I'm going to come down a little bit more, because I want this to be more of a V in here. Okay, now remember when you saw this on the guide, this was the chisel edge not the flat edge. All right, so you can look right here and this will help you see that you are taking these and you're doing these little lines like this. All right, and that's what's giving you that nice look in there. So where that is, is we're gonna pick this up and we have little lines of it going in here. All right, on the chisel, a little bit in here. Straight paint, I'm not making it inky or water it down or anything. And then we're gonna come over here. Kinda like it's got eyebrows over here. And that pure white gets you that fluffiness of the eyes. Now I'm going to come in with a two script liner and add more around his uh, beak and all. But for now, just want you to see this. Okay, so let's go and look at around the eye. All right, so I want to show you this again. Look at this right around the eye right there. So we've done it all the way to here. Some of this is coming down and then little strokes there. So let's lay this back down. I'm gonna put it a little closer so you can see it. So he looks like he's had a haircut here because it's choppy. So when we use the script liner some here, we're gonna get more of those fluffy looks. But right now I'm still building this look, all right? So we're going to come around the eye, all right, and all around here we're going to grab this paint and we're going to fluff this out from here around.
I even came in here with a little bit of the liner. This is a two script liner and it helps you to come here and I show you, let's practice right in here and getting that look. Roll the brush into the white. All right, and get that fluffiness. The other part I want to do is to do this right here so you can see what we were just practicing. All right, so right in here, it's going to come down here and it's going to be fluffy. Can you see that? And I also just put a little bit of a white line around the eye with a script liner. All around here, we have a line. And these are the layers you're going to see here, which I was just showing you on here. All right. We have, let's get the six again. Okay, I'm going to pick it up right on the chisel. Now see that brought water down. I can show you that I can just wipe that off. And it's a little, it doesn't dry, uh, wipe off of raw wood as easy unless you have a lot of base coating. Okay, so that's those two. We have the liner. And I go back with the liner and come in here and get a lot more fluff later. All right. So then we're going to go to this next layer here, and it's going to be, what did it show you here? Just a little bit of coming down along here. And the next layer is bigger right here. What I did was I did just a few along there. And then I'm down here doing the chisel edge. That's flat of the brush. This is a two flat. And that's on the chisel of this brush all the way up. Then right down here, I'll show you here. Right down here, we're doing a little bit of this right there. All right, so what we're doing on this is, is all these little strokes here. So if you see this, I'm pulling them down, short, long, and loose, all right? And I did the same thing here, guys, so just so you feel like you can get that to look good, and the consistency of inky or not inky. But then I'm going to go over here in the, in the uh, pure black, and I'm going to bring some of that in so that when you're doing this, you see this, especially when it's coming out here. So I'm going to wipe this off and show you where these are on our piece, on our project, okay? So right here, we've got this in here, and we've got it all down in here. So I'm going to pick up the white, and I have some of the um, pure black with it. Let's pick up some more here. Now, it's really, these are thin feathers that I think we've seen some of these on roosters where it's just a little fuzzy. All right, so I know I have some gray looking here, but as I do this, I'm gonna come in here with more white. Titanium white, a little bit of water, and okay, so you're going to get this as fluffy as you want it here. You're also going to come down in this area because as I went along here, you 
you're going to come right along here. And it makes them really interesting the way you start pulling these in and out. And when we did them out is where I came along here. And I put a little bit more of that um, pure, pure black. And then I got a little bit longer when it got here near the tail. Okay, then you come back on top of that and you can add more of the titanium white back on there. Okay, and I also added just a little bit in this area when I came back. But just remember, sometimes I put the gray tones and sometimes I came back and put white over it and went back and forth, back and forth. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and finish this up and you guys work on <clears throat> adding all the white to this now. Okay, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so first thing I want to tell you is that yours and mine compared to this one, they're always different. They're different strokes as we're going, and um, but it's just like all the different owls are going to be different. So what I wanted to share with you is I came back, and as I saw, I had some a little bit darker. I added a little bit of darker. I just stroked it on there. I didn't um, chisel it on there. Okay, so see how I put the darker in here? I took the 12 with floating medium and some burn umber, and I just laid it in here just to add some other shades of darkness in there because I noticed this was quite a bit darker. I do like some of the lighter colors that I still have in here, but I'll show you with some medium and some of the burn umber. I'll show you that I, I came right along here just like this and shaded that to make it look right in here. You could do the same thing where it just gives you more depth in here with a little bit of floating medium and uh, color. So, okay, so on the raw wood, what I felt like is I needed to come around and do a little bit of the floating uh, with a floating medium, three quarter inch brush, and a little bit of um, the burnt umber on one edge here. Now, you can tell right here, that's way, that's not just on the corner. All right, so I'm going to pick up more medium. You just need to clean the brush if you are all the way across. Now look, I'm going to put lots of medium so when I go around here, see how that shades it? And it just gives you a whole different look. So more medium, a little bit more burn umber. So as you take this floating medium around, it gives you, it sets this kind of, take some floating medium and work it in if it's got too much, just like that was a little bit more than I wanted. And then especially where the white was, the um, white areas, I needed to come right in here so you could see it. And if you go like this very lightly, it goes underneath those strokes that it, you put that I put along down here. Okay, and let's shade this a little bit more, and then we'll be ready to put our branch in here. Because I wanted to come under here. Look how heavy I did that. So then I can work on the floating medium and take a little bit off. Okay, even on the raw wood. Okay. Now, next thing I want to share with you is that we put in this branch, okay? And um, we're using both colors. We're using the burnt umber with pure black in it, and then some Pueblo with some burnt umber, okay? So I'm going to use burnt umber and Pueblo. All right, and I'm going to have this come. If you look at there, it came right up here. And I wanted that in here and in that location so that the leaves would look like they're coming from other trees. All right, and then maybe the, he's sitting on a tree over here. All right, so I'm on the chisel edge of this brush. And then I'm going to take and make a Y. You see that where I Y it right there? 
And then there's little limbs that come down in different places. I'm up on the chisel. Chisel. All right. <clears throat> and I added some of these other limbs in here, which just connected some of the leaves after I did the leaves. All right. Now, so the whole idea is if this is all under here, it's like he's sitting on the tree on the other side, right? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> I might go ahead and put a few more of these. A little bit in here with some medium. So he's trying to disguise himself between all these colors. Okay, now next thing we're going to do is we are going to, I came up with a 12, it shows that you are going to use um, the number eight with some burnt umber and some pure black. And we're going to come right in here and just add little bits of that. as more detail in, in the tree. Just a little bit to give you the idea that there's like bark and sometimes I add just a little bit of white in there too. Okay. So make sure that you wire it off on all of these so they don't look like they're sticking straight out. All right. Now, what we're going to do, I want to put this to the side for a minute and share with you about these leaves. Now, it might make you feel more comfortable to put a couple of these leaves on. Like this one leaf is right in here. And I won't touch the limb by putting it there, okay? Okay, so I'm going to turn this leaf coming downward. And it is easier for you to have a shape on here so that you have something to follow. So that's why Chris and I put these little leaves in this part so that you just have something to go by. Now, you can pick out any leaf that's in your area during the fall. Okay, Ooh, I can barely see that. Okay, um, and then we have another one here. Let's see if I can get this on here. Uh, I'm gonna wait, I don't wanna get this limb. It's all wet, let's just wait. But just showing you that you can do that and I'll show you how that helps you now you saw me trace, trace this one on, so I kind of sketched so I wouldn't get into the wet here and put a couple more of that same maple leaf style that because I want to share those colors and how we got those colors and take it to here. Okay, I keep looking at my owl glaring and looking at me. It's kind of a cool thing here to be painting that. Um, why I want to show, well, I am painting my leaves here. I want to share with you that we have some Pueblo, some burnt umber, but we're going to need a couple more colors. And so let's pull out some of the apple red, and we need some of the yellow tones, which is the bumblebee. And let's see what else. Okay, so we do have pure orange. I'm going to squeeze that out. And we have the burn number red, so classic green. That's what we're missing, classic green. Okay, I'm going to work on this top one, but be, so I'm getting that ready in my mind, then I want you to come here and let's practice on here. So the first thing that we're doing is showing you how to load these different colors. All right. So I usually on these down here, I usually, when I'm doing it, would use a three quarter, but you have more control if you're using the 12 like I did on the guide. And so what we're doing is I'm showing you shading. So let's look at that for a minute. All right, if I use um, some Pueblo and some Apple Red, and I'm gonna come right here, pick up some Apple Red, and Pueblo. Now look at this. It's going to go right there and get you a really nice color. 
All right, so while well, I've got that, I want you to see that that's what I would start right here. Now that's real important that you practice that look. Same thing happens here. We're coming right here, try to stay within the lines and see how the brush is flat. You can't do it by being standing up on the chisel like this. You've got to lay it down. See how I'm going in and out, in and out along here. So what I did on this one is just like these, I've held the apple red on the outside edge. All right, now I am gonna wash this. Sometimes I don't wash it, I just go to the next color. But we're gonna come right here. Let's take this off as we go. We're gonna come right here and this is Bumblebee and Burnt Umber. So we get Bumblebee on here, some Burnt Umber, and I'm gonna go to an empty space and there we are. And we're gonna work this in. Back and forth, back and forth. And I, I did use what to say, oh, this has a little bit of pure orange. I need to read my instructions. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna start with pure orange and a dip of burn umber. And then I can dip into bumblebee. All right, so this should be this color. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so right here, I went right here with the burnt umber on the outside edge, and I started blending that in. All right, same thing here. Burnt umber are all the way to there, and make sure you fill it into the middle. All right, same thing here. So this is just the burnt umber on the edge with those mix of colors. And then is when I came in with the apple red on the outside. All right, but I like how you, just like the leaves are, how they change colors. All right, so I'm gonna wash this out. And we have pure orange and bumblebee. So we move that over and there we go. So pure orange and bumblebee. So what I could do is start right here with the yellow where the red is. And that has a little bit too much, I think that had too much water in it. So I could come right over here and show you that I just connect to the where I left off and I can go back to some burnt umber and end it. And then you would pull a stem right up in the middle. All right, same thing here. All right, and some of the leaves, I did come in and do a few of these. All right. So you decide if you want them or not. The key is all these be the beautiful shading. So let's wipe it off. And this is truly practice this, then put it on some paper to make sure that you feel comfortable with those strokes. And here's all the colors. This is the classic green with the bumblebee and then Bumblebee with Pueblo, which I kind of did up here. This has a little bit of pure orange in it. Okay, so look at this really closely as you're adding the colors here. All right, so what the first one, if you look at the very top right here, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to keep whatever I have on this brush and then stroke a little bit of um, Bumblebee Pueblo, and then the burnt umber. Now it's gonna soak up into this wood like I told you. So you wanna try to have just the edge of, I wanna get a little bit of medium, the edge of that burnt umber. And then the floating medium is gonna help you pull this on down, 
okay? Now I'm gonna take some Pueblo with some pure orange and then side load a little bit of that apple red. Okay, and decide if you need floating medium or not. Okay, up. I'm gonna take that off. So I'm gonna have to try a few colors and make sure I like it. Like the bumblebee and apple red. Now then pull these colors into the middle. And then what I'm gonna do is take this off and I have pure uh, right here. Let's go between these two. I'll make sure I don't have moisture in the brush. Go between these two and go back to here and I'm holding the, the bumblebee on the outside. A little bit more bumblebee. Okay, and just fill this in. All right, so if I take a side load right here, got a little friend visiting me there. All right, okay, so then I come in here, just sometimes, I don't always like veins uh, put in my leaves, but on these, on these oak uh, leaves, it kind of looks better sometimes. All right, so see how we get all the pretty colors? Now the other type of leaf I did here is just all one color with um, the main part of the leaf, and then you have the pretty colors on the outside. So with that one, it's uh, bumblebee. Make sure you have moisture out of the brush. So I'm gonna brush all bumblebee then I'm going to pick up a little bit of Pueblo and a little bit of Burnt Umber, and I'm going to work that in. Okay, so right here's a spot I can keep coming back to. All right, now let's do this one um, right up here. That's the one we traced on, so we're going to come right here. Let's get more Bumblebee. Because see, another thing you can do is base coat in some of that center first. Now I can come in here and get the shading from outside here. So any kind of leaf that you have that you really love the colors of. There we go. <clears throat> I have to go look them up because we don't have changing colors in Florida. There we go. All right, see how we've got the pretty color on the outside edge? Now, it is easier to turn this around a little bit. So I wanna just turn it a little bit so I can get to it. And I picked up just on the corner. Um, I just wanna share with you, if I just pick up on the corner the color I want, I want you to understand that um, um, with a 12 and smaller, and you're loading like this, you can load it all one color and then just pick up, like it's all bumblebee. And then I side load till I get the color I want on the rest of it, okay? Now, if you look at that one, it is slightly darker. So it's nice to like even just come in here a little bit and maybe just do one side a little darker. See how easy that is to come back? And then I pulled, like say this is connected to that limb, I pulled the stem in, all right? So let's concentrate up there for a few minutes. I'm gonna use all pure orange on this brush and side load a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, so now what we need to do, let's go back over here. I want you to see on your guide. All right, so right here is some of the, let's move up a little bit. Right here is some of the one-stroke leaves, and 
you can see all through here I have these different leaves and I just use whatever color I want to pick up that would give you a nice shading this has a little bit of red the apple red so I can just come right in there and stand up and pull the stem and then I have some that are more green so we can put a little bit of classic green and work that in and come in here see some orange pure orange and some green and then these are mostly red apple red and some brown so I just um, continued the good thing about the owl is he's got all those neutral colors so you can make any leaves you want color wise and it would still be pretty so this is a little bit of the pure orange and green so pressure stand up pressure stand up okay so we have a couple up here let's move up here a little bit more and um, I have a few more if I'm, I'm just working at the top right now which is pure orange and um, green so there we go all right so I'm going to wash that because this was um, some Pueblo and green that I put up here I'll work that in a little bit so there we go now I want to add some red, apple red, onto this. This is a little bit of leafing up above. Go back over each side there. Put a little bit of burnt umber in. And I can do a couple more here. Okay, so we've got this guy. Let's pick up some apple red. So bumblebee, apple red. Get some of that pretty color in there. And I've got, I'm gonna wipe this, pick up pure orange with a touch of burn umber. Okay, so this is a little dark, but I want you to see the difference if I just come in here and add to that same color a little bit more of the bumblebee. And pull the stem. Okay, so we have all of those up there. We can also come in here with some of these, I did little teeny pressure lift, little teeny small leaves, and pull with a chisel as you pull the stem into it. All right. Now, <clears throat> so we've got a nice collection up there. Now I want to do another larger leaf right here. And I'm going to take whatever's on the brush now, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber, I'm going to put a teeny bit of floating medium so this moves. And we're going to come right in here. Follow this right along here. Now, you might just need one bit of floating medium on that tip because it's not moving for me. Did you see that? Oh, see there? It's nice and smooth. And then you're going to pull this in. And I just, you know, it's kind of fun because nature has all kinds of beautiful colors. It's kind of fun just to come along here and see what kind of shades that you can add in your leaves. You have an advantage if you're up north from Florida because I don't get to see all these unless I see them online somewhere. Okay, now let's get some 
pure orange, brighten that up a little bit. Now, when I get this pure orange, I wanted to put some bumblebee out here going to those reds, okay? And just pull them all in. See, and sometimes, I don't know if, if you like this idea, but sometimes I put a little break in it or something and make it burn umber and it looks like a little um, spots in the leaf. It's kind of fun, a little bit more natural. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to put a real colorful one right here, but I can start out with whatever color is in my brush. So this, this one, again, come here if you want. I guess we don't see that white. It is easier so you don't lose control. I just follow the outside of the leaf because when I draw a paint, my eyes are looking at what's on the outside edge. So see, I'm just coming in here and doing this oak leaf with different um, shapes on there. And maybe one more here. You could do a maple leaf, but it's nice to have a maple leaf in front of you to follow. All right, so the first thing I did was come right in here Pull this up. All right, right to the middle. Going to add a little bit of red. Oh. Apple red and yellow. Now, each one of these is going to help you to come right over here. And try this for a while and see if you can get that move. Also, just remind yourself if you're liking the color that you picked up. Any combination of the ones that we're using. And then I came on this side. With a little bit of classic green. Classic green and bumblebee. Dry, dry, dry right there. If you have enough paint, you'll be fine. If not, go get some floating medium so you feel you can get that look. Okay, so let's, sometimes you can do like this and do it all one color and then come back and just shade edges with a little bit of color. All right, are you seeing the brightness? It's kind of fun, huh? All right, <clears throat> I do like, as I have this brush and it's got some paint in it, I do like to just go and stroke some single leaves with whatever color I was working with at that point. All right, so we've got some red that's on there. And it's got a, lot of, a little bit of green. This one had more pure orange in it. So I can do another one. And then I did come in here with some red leaves. Another red leaf here. All right. Some orange and do that right over here too with some browns. A little bit of green. All right, so it's getting a nice feeling now. And I, I like two different leaves that this one right here, which is the bumblebee really good on the 12, and then some burnt umber. You can also have a foam plate next to you so you can see 
if you're blending it like you want, or this is the whole idea of your guide, as you can see if you're liking that color. All right, so this one right here, floating medium and bumblebee. All right, so that's not at all the bright color I wanted. So I'm gonna go right here. When I said you could base cut it in one color and then come back and add another one. One stroke painting, we like to blend shade and highlight in each stroke. But when you have a light color like this bumblebee, you can put that down first. And then I can just pick up little bits of Pueblo. And on the other side, I put a little bit of burnt umber. And then we're going to pull the stem right up in there. Okay. So the last leaf that I'm going to do, and then we're going to be finished, is I'm going to pick up Pueblo and a little bit of red, apple red on the edge. And it's going to be right in here. A little bit of floating medium to help me move it along. Okay. So by pulling that color in, we can go to the other side and I'm going to put some yellow bumblebee with Pueblo and we're going to pick up some burn number. All right, so right here. All right, there we go. Now, be creative, put all the leaves you want or less leaves if you want. Um, just have fun with your creation and I like to always make sure that you sign your piece and share your piece and I will see you next time. Wasn't that fun? I love teaching you how to do all those different colors in fall leaves. And there's more than one color that we added to each leaf. That was even better. And then learning the owl is really great because owls have lots of different types of feathers, even the little fluffy ones that we learned today. And so besides their beautiful eyes, I love that I was able to teach you different ways to do feathers all over that owl's body. And so what I'm happy about is having you here with us. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, it's Let's Paint with Plaid. And I'm telling you, uh, we have the most amazing people sharing their art on there and sharing the lessons with all the wonderful educators here at Plaid. And so when you're there and you're thinking, I should post my picture, I would love for you to do hashtag Let's Paint Challenge and tell them that you took our lesson and that as you're painting the lesson, you just had to share it. That would make me really happy. Besides you painting with me today, I want you to think about the other birds and blossom lessons that are available. And we've already had five lessons, so go check them out. And then if you haven't seen them, there might be one that you would love to paint with me, or even all of them, okay? And please join me for my last birds and blossom lesson, which is a blue jay. And it's got pretty little snowflakes. So until next time, let's paint. <music>